Thank you, Father. We give praise to the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Exalted One, the One who was and is and is to come. We give thanks for this opportunity to give God praise this morning. We thank Him for His goodness to us. Yes. We appreciate the God of our salvation. You know, this morning I was sort of awakened by the words of a particular psalm and I went looking for it. And the Lord ministered some things to me this morning. The words were, there is a river. And you know, I just went looking for it and God was showing me that in the midst of all the chaos, Though the mountains be moved and though whatever may happen, there is a river. There is a God who is with us. There is a God who is almighty. He is the king of glory. And he watches over us. And so I am so grateful to the almighty God this morning for who he is. He is refreshing us, reviving us, restoring us in the midst of pandemic, in the midst of whatever the situation. And he is definitely the river that we can run to and we can be refreshed in. So this morning we're grateful to him. And we want to begin with a word of prayer. Wherever you are, look to God with us this morning. Make sure that he is the one who is in charge of your life. The one who is with you this morning so that he can minister to you through every song, through every word, through everything that is said and done today. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Father, we give you thanks today. We thank you that you are the King of glory. You are the one who reigns forever. Yes, you are the one who is there for us, who will never leave us or forsake us. God, you told us that you are our refuge and a very present help in a time of trouble. And so, God, we praise you this morning. We give you thanks. We give you glory. We give you honor. We thank you, O oh God, for the assurance that you have given us, O oh Lord God. And so, Father, we appreciate who you are this morning. We appreciate you today. We appreciate you, O oh God. We lift you up above all nations, kingdoms, and thrones today, O oh Lord God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, O oh Lord God, because you are great and greatly to be praised. I appreciate the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords today. Father, we pray this morning that you would minister to every listening heart today, O oh God. Let there be, O oh God, a mighty move of your spirit through this uh, service, O oh Lord God. Let some life be touched, O oh Lord God, this morning. We are not here, O oh God, just for formality, Father. We are here because you lead us, you guide us, and you are with us. And we know, God, that through this time, O oh Lord God, you will minister to somebody somewhere today. Father, we give you thanks for what you are doing. We give you praise for your awesome goodness. We thank you, O oh Lord God, for what shall be accomplished in and through this service today. Bless every musician. Bless every singer. Bless every person here today, O oh God. And every air that will be listening. In the name of Jesus. And God, we give you praise, honor, and glory for your goodness. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God, glory to God. Thank you. Oh, hallelujah. God some celebrate with us this morning because he's a good God.
Jesus. Glory be to God. Oh, he is so good. I love him, I love him, I love him, I love him.
you are going to be. Awesome. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. I hand over to the servant of God this morning. I pray that your hearts are open. As you've poured out your praise, that you are ready to receive what God has to say to you today. To him be all the glory. Thank you, Jesus. Bless the name of the Lord today, hallelujah. God is great and awesome, and that's what we declare today, even in the house of God. For those of you, wherever you are connected with us, great are you, Lord. That's what we're proclaiming across the earth, across the nations. And most of you in your homes, in your families, God is certainly great and mighty and awesome. And we are thankful to Him for another day. As the Bible rightly says, this is the day that the Lord has made. And I want you to proclaim that even right there in your home. I will rejoice. Whatever you're going through, whatever you're facing, whatever experience you have right now, just declare, I will rejoice and I will be glad today because God still is faithful. He has not changed. The same yesterday, today, and forever. Unchanging God that we worship and celebrate today. Hallelujah. It's another Sunday. Today is the day in which uh, the Bible tells us we come together as His people. Whether or not we are doing it, uh, should I say in a personal way, we are doing it, should I say in a virtual way, but we are together again, as the right of the song says, praising the Lord. And something's good going to happen. If you're in your home, tell somebody next to you, something's good going to happen to you today, because the Lord is right here in your home. Hallelujah. I want to share with you from God's Word today, in, from the book of Leviticus, chapter 6, Leviticus chapter 6, and there are several portions of scripture. And as I read, you will recognize that there are, uh, there's a statement that is made, made mention of several times in these portions of scripture that I read. And uh, that's the area which I would like to focus on today. The Bible tells us from verse 8, it says, And the Lord said to Moses, and verse 9 says, Give orders and directions to Aaron and his sons, saying, This is the law for the burnt offering. The offering is to be on the firewood on the altar, all night till the morning. The fire of the altar is to be kept burning. And the stem says, And the priest is to put on his linen robes and his linen trousers, and take up what is over of the offering after it has been burned on the altar, and put it on the side of the altar. Verse 11 says, Then having taken off his linen robes and put on the other clothing, he is to take it away into uh, a clean place outside the tent circle. And verse 12 says, The fire on the altar is to be kept burning. It is never to go out. Every morning the priest is to put wood on it, placing the burnt offering in order on it. And there the fat of the peace offering is to be burnt. And verse 13 says, let the fire keep burning on the altar at all times. It is never to go out. And you will see that statement coming up three times at least in those portions of scripture that we read. That the fire should never go out. The fire should always keep on burning. And that's what I want to talk to you today about and share with you from my heart. And I want to declare to you the statement says, keep the fire burning. Wherever you are in your home, I want to say to you, keep the fire burning burning. Keep that fire burning in your hearts. Keep that fire burning. The priest in this day, the Bible tells us, Aaron's sons, were given instructions and their responsibility was to ensure that in the tabernacle that was erected, they were to ensure that there was always a continual fire burning in that temple, in that tabernacle. And the Bible tells us that they as they were received the directive, ensured that that fire would have kept burning all the days of Israel's experience. They were to ensure that fire was important to Israel's existence. That fire was necessary for them. That fire was important to Israel. I remember the Bible tells us that even while Israel was journeying through the wilderness on their way from uh, the land of Egypt as it were, moving into the land of Canaan to possess it, the Bible tells us that God's presence was with them every single part of the journey. And one of the things that was very significant in their journey was that God's presence was with them also in the form of a pillar of fire. The fire of God's presence was always there with them. They had in the nighttime 
The Bible says this pit of fire because of course you will understand for several reasons. One of the reasons why the pit of fire was existing by night and God manifested himself in that pillar was the desert in the night time would have been cold and chilly and the presence of God would have presented that sense of warmth, that sense of comfort that Israel needed in the midst of their journey while they were moving. And the scripture tells us in the daytime, he became a cloud that was covering them from the heat of the day. God is an amazing God. But one of the things that you will see in the Bible, in the scriptures, is that God is always many times represented or spoken of as fire. For the Bible tells us in the Hebrews that he is a consuming fire. There is a fire that is always associated with God's presence. And the Bible also reminds us that even when Moses went up into the mountain, the scripture reminds us that the mountain, as it were, seemed to have been set on fire. One of the reasons why Israel, the general congregation, ran from that mountain was because when they saw the fire on the mountain, they were afraid of God's presence as he manifested himself in that mountain. And the Bible also reminds us that even before Moses was called into ministry, Moses was tending to his father, uh, his flock, and while he was there in that mountain place alone, the Bible says he saw a fire upon a tree and when he got near to observe the fire the scripture tells him that he saw that the tree was on fire but it was not burning and he heard a voice speaking to him out of that experience saying put the shoes off your feet for when you're standing it is a holy place that is the fire that was there always through the scripture you will see God's presence is represented by a fire all this fire is necessary Necessary for Israel's experience because had it not been for the fire of God's presence, Israel would not have been able to come through many of their difficult experiences. Israel would not have been able to make that journey in the wilderness a successful one. They needed the fire of God's presence always with them. And I'm saying to you that God's fire and Israel's experience was in the tabernacle. God, the presence of God's fire was always there with them. And if you will recognize from the scripture that the fire that was there in the temple that the priest was uh, working with to ensure that it always kept burning, this fire was no ordinary fire. This fire that was in that temple, when you do the, 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 the reading and you do the research, you will discover that that fire came in the midst of Israel as they offered an offering and the fire of God came down. And from the day that that fire came down, the, Eve, the priest was supposed to ensure that that fire that God sent among them was always present in their presence. So they had to make sure that they do all what is necessary to preserve that fire. And I want you to recognize that the fire, as I was saying before, was important for Israel. And so is also as we believers in Christ. I want you to know that we need the fire just as Israel needed and was dependent on that fire. There was a fire in the temple. There was a fire that the priest had to tend to. And the scripture tells us that as they tended to that fire on a daily basis, the priest would have had to go there and on the morning time and in the evening time, he would have had to ensure that there was a continual fire burning. May I say to you that there is no literal altar that is set up in our own experience now. Even in this church, this house where we are, there is no physical fire as it were. But I'm saying to you that those of us who have come together, as long as you're a Christian believer, may I say to you that the fire is still at work in the life of every believer. The fire is not burning at any altar per se, or any specific altar, as in the brazen altar. But the fire is still alive today. Burning not on an altar as it was a physical altar, but the fire is burning in the hearts of every believer. There is a fire that God has released. And I want you to recognize that the same kind of 
manner in which God would have sent the fire. The fire came upon in the midst of Israel and they were supposed to preserve that fire. That fire came in Israel's midst. When the Bible tells us an offering was made, a sacrifice was made, and the fire of God was sent from heaven and consumed the offering. I want you to know from the very day that you made an offering to Christ of your life and you gave your life to Christ, there was a fire that was sent from heaven that was released in your spirit, in your heart, that fire of God's presence. And the Bible tells us that just like the offering was consumed by God and the priest would have offered it upon the brazen altar, so the brazen altar of your heart, there is a fire that is burning. And I want to say to you, the priest had a responsibility to ensure that just like the fire was released on that particular day, they were supposed to ensure that the fire would continually burn. You have a responsibility as well as a Christian to ensure that the fire that God has sent to your heart will continually burn in your spirit. That's your responsibility as a Christian. In this time when they say, you know, we are confined to our homes and we are not able to come together in a, major, a big congregation as it were. I even want to admonish you even in this time to please keep the fire burning. Keep that fire burning in your heart. Don't let it go out. Keep that fire burning wherever you are. You might be secluded in your home. You might be in a place alone right now. You might be just probably looking at things from a virtual perspective. But I want you to know whether it is virtual or whether it is personal. However, I want to encourage you. Keep that fire burning wherever you are. You know there's a song we used to sing a long time that song used to say, a little more oil in my lamp to keep that fire burning. I want to encourage you, let the oil always be in your lamp so that the fire of God can always be burning in your spirit, always burning in your heart. Because as Israel was dependent on that fire for their journey and their success through the wilderness in order to possess what God says was theirs. If you don't have that fire in your spirit, you will not be able to navigate your life experience through this on this journey that all of us are on right now without the fire of his presence that fire is necessary for every one of us it was necessary for the priest it was necessary for the Jews and it is also necessary for God's priests his people in this present time but there are four things I would like to highlight or three things I would like to highlight to you in order to keep the fire burning you need three things if you recognize from the experience, the fire needed an altar. The fire needs an altar. Without the altar, the fire would not be sent. The fire needs an altar. You see, the altar is a very special place. The altar is a place where we say that people have an encounter with God. The fire was a place where the priest would have engaged and connected with God in such a meaningful, personal way. Without that altar, there was no meeting and no communion between the, uh, the priest and God himself. The altar was necessary to establish relationship. And so the Bible tells us, if you look carefully in the scripture, in the tabernacle, from that experience you will realize that the priest, the scripture tells us, will have come to the brazen altar with the sacrifices. And he will have, uh, uh, the Bible tells us, he will have at that altar, he will have a, 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 a loud altar to become that place where he would slay the animal and he would allow the altar to become a place where he would dissect all the parts and the Bible tells us on that brazen altar there was always a fire burning and the priest kept that fire burning consistently and the Bible tells us as long as there is an altar there will always be a sacrifice available where there is no altar there will not be a sacrifice and I want you to know that the altar in order to keep the fire burning, you need an altar. And as I said before, there is no literal altar set up, but there is an altar that God is connecting with in the life of his people, and that is the heart of every believer. The altar God is connecting with is the heart of you and I. 
Our hearts are that meeting place where my, ourselves and God would meet together. Our hearts become that place where the sacrifice is offered. Our hearts become that meeting place where God's presence can touch our lives. Our hearts become that meeting place where flesh can be destroyed and all that has to be burnt will be burnt at the altar. And I want you to recognize that the altar will not truly serve its purpose except the sacrifice have been placed upon it and there is a consuming of the things that are not necessary or the things that are not good. The altar was a significant place for Israel and so I am saying to you the altar is a significant place for you and I. Our hearts God is looking for. That's why the Bible says man looks at the outward appearance but God deals with the heart of every one of us and I'm saying to you this morning let the fire of God that he has released in your heart let that fire never go out. Cause that altar of your heart to always be burning. Let there always be an altar set up between you and God. Let there always be a sacrifice placed upon that altar. The Bible tells us that even before Abraham, when he was given instructions and before he was able to place his son upon the altar, the Bible says before he was able to place his son there, he had to first erect an altar. And I'm saying to you, there has to be an altar for the sacrifice to be placed upon him. Your heart is that altar, that meeting place with God, where he wants to connect with us. Abraham offered or sought to offer his son upon that place of meeting. Thank God, the Bible tells us that God gave him a supernatural, God intervened in his experience supernaturally. I want to encourage you, and I want to let you know this morning, that the altar is a place where change happens. The altar is a place where renewal happens. The altar is a place where transformation takes place. The altar is a place, and I remember preaching this message to some folks already. The altar is a place where your life is altered. Your life is changed at the altar. And I can tell you, if in your life there is an altar, there is a meeting place between you and God, I want you to know that as you and God will connect, so you would find that there will be an experience of transformation, renewal. There will be a breaking that's going to happen. But there are some things that must take place. And it has to happen at the altar. For you and God to have that kind of connection, there must be a, a special meeting place. And I'm saying to you, that special meeting place is in your heart, between you and God. It's a personal thing. It's a private experience. God sees and knows the heart of every single one of us. And I'm encouraging you today as a believer, let your heart always be burning with the fire of his presence. And I can tell you, as long as the altar is set up, there will be a fire that will be continually burning on that brazen altar, the brazen altar of your heart. And as long as the altar has sacrifices, God's presence is going to always be there to consume that experience. Hallelujah. We give God glory and we honor his name today. For there is none like he is. He is the living God. He is the mighty awesome king. The one that we celebrate and worship today. I want to encourage you. In your home where you are. Let the fire keep burning upon the altar of your heart. Let the fire keep on burning. You see, the Bible gives us an understanding that one of the things that the priest had to ensure while the brazen altar was the place where the sacrifice was made, the priest had to ensure that he take what happens there at the brazen altar and go and move into the holy place. One of the mediums or the use of the things that he used to move the fire from the brazen place or the, shall I say, the altar court into the holy place, the priest would have used something called a censer to move the fire from the brazen altar in the open place into the holy place. And I want you to recognize one of the things that the censer speaks to us of. The censer speaks of prayer. It's one of the things that moves the sacrifice from the altar to the open court and brings it into the holy place. I want to encourage you today. The priest would have had to do so. And the priest came to the altar and he ensured that as he sacrificed them, the altar, the brazen altar speaks of a place of humility. It speaks of a place of brokenness and sacrifice. 
a place where blood is shed at the altar court at the altar court a place and without the Bible tells us without the shedding of blood there can be no remission of sins and I thank God for the altar I thank God for that altar that as long as you are born again there is an altar set up in your life and there's a fire that has been released in your life and that fire comes from the presence of God in your heart there must be an altar for the sacrifice the other thing I would like to encourage, in order to keep the fire burning, not only do you need an altar, but you also need fuel. Without fuel, the altar will not, the fire will not keep burning. You see, I understand from fire and listening and reading, I understand that in order to keep a fire going, you need three things. You need oxygen, you need fuel, and you also need to have heat. And those three things will constitute or make up what we understand as fire. You need oxygen, you need fuel, and you need heat to establish a fire and to keep it burning. And may I suggest to you that out of your own experience as a believer, that some of the things that you need to ensure that your fire is continually fueled you need to experience as a believer when all of those things around you might be challenging your faith and challenging your walk with God you need to ensure that you keep your fire burning on the altar and I say to, say to you this morning all truth is parallel and I'm saying that from the perspective that as the altar of fire needs oxygen, it needs fuel, and it also need, needs heat. I am saying that the same experience is necessary for you to keep that fire burning, the fuel that you need. And so I'm saying some of the fuels that you will need, the things that you need to ensure that you're giving fuel to the fire that is in your heart. You need to walk in a place where your prayer life is strong. You need to ensure that the Word of God is strong in your life. Those are some of the fuels that you need. You need to ensure that your worship experience is strong before God. You need the fuel of fellowship. And I know right now, the kind of fellowship that we are accustomed with is not really possible at this present time. But I want to encourage you to ensure that you keep that spirit of fellowship, whether it's near, whether it's far. Keep the spirit of fellowship always because fellowship keeps the fire burning in your heart. And I want to encourage you, you need the fuel of the Holy Spirit and you also need the fuel of evangelism. Those are some of the things that will contribute towards the fuel that has to keep the fire burning in your heart. I want you to recognize there is one of the things that really gives the Christian a sense of joy and excitement for living. And that is when you share Christ with somebody. The spirit of evangelism. When you share Christ with somebody and you see someone comes to Lord Jesus and I know right now, you know, uh, a whole lot of stuff is being done virtually, but use the opportunity while you have time now to share Jesus because I can tell you the world needs Jesus. Share Christ with someone and I can tell you when you're finished sharing Christ with that person, you will leave from that person's presence with a sense of joy, with a sense of delight that will give fuel to your spirit and keep the fire burning. I want to encourage you. You know, I was reading not too long and I thought I heard one of our preachers made mention of that some time ago. I was reading concerning this great preacher in, in Britain, uh, somewhere Scottish I believe, and it, they tell me that one of the things, he had this passion, he was Lord for a man who had a passion for God and a passion for souls. And it was understood that he was on the ship, the Titanic, that was going, uh, that was uh, that sunk one day. In fact, this ship, they said, was in unsink, insunkable. And they said that this ship cannot be sunk. And it was understood on the night that the ship was going down. It was said that he was sharing tracks on that ship with every single unsafe person. My understanding from reading, and they said this is a real story. My understanding is that while the ship was going down, and they said give us the women and the children to save us first. From my reading, it is said he had a daughter with him. He gave his daughter to a, a, a woman on the ship. And, and they were the only ones who were first supposed to go on the raft. And he spent the rest of his time. And he made an announcement to all of the Christian men on the ship. And he said, listen, I want every Christian man to ensure, firstly, that the unsaved men and, 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 and women are saved before we are. Because his heart was concerned about their soul salvation. And he knew that maybe death was imminent. 
But he was saying that even if we have to die, our faith in Christ is already secure. But you who don't know Jesus, he was trying to give them another opportunity to accept Christ. And the testimony that came out of his experience thereafter, from those who escaped that experience, the testimony says that they literally remembered there was this gentleman who was on this ship who was sharing traps and witnessing at the last point of his life. What an amazing gentleman. What an amazing man. The fire of God was burning in his spirit. And even though in death, he was still seeking to reach those who are lost. He was still seeking to reach men and women. Because there was a fire in his spirit burning. And he was giving fuel to that fire. The third thing that I want you to recognize that a fire needs to keep it burning. Is that a fire needs committed priests. The fire needs committed priests. From the portion of the scripture that we read, you will realize that the, preach had, the priest had a responsibility every morning and every evening to ensure that the fire is replenished at the altar and there was a sacrifice burning throughout the course of the night and throughout the course of the day. And if the priest was not committed to that assignment, the fire would have not continually been burning. But I'm saying to you, in order for the fire to be burning in your heart, I want you to know that you have to be a committed priest. You have to be committed to your responsibility, committed to the God that you serve, committed to your faith, committed to your conviction, committed to the things that you're required to do. You must be committed to reading the word. You must be committed to fellowship with other believers. You must be committed to spending time with God in prayer. You must be committed to your faith in him. And if you are committed, then the fire in your heart will always keep on burning. I'm recognizing there's a whole lot of people in this time whose fires are becoming very dim. Their fires are not shining as bright as it once used to. Maybe it might be because you are not able to connect with those who may have been around you as living fire sticks as it were and you are not able to connect with them in that personal way that you once used because the fire that wasn't there was possibly rubbing off on you and keeping you alive. Because of the fact that the fire is not around you anymore, your fire right now is growing dim. I want to encourage you today, keep the fire burning. Keep that fire burning. You have to be committed to that fire, committed to your priesthood, committed to your responsibility, committed to your faith. And as long as you're committed, the Bible gives us an understanding that the fire will keep on burning at all times as long as you stay faithful to the God that you know. The priest had to keep that fire burning. And you and I have the same responsibility, even in this day, to ensure that the fire that is within our hearts keeps burning all the time. I, re I recall again, I'm quoting from that song. I'm remembering the Bible tells us that in, in the scripture, the proverb speaking about those, the five, uh, the ten virgins, and the Bible tells us five was wise and five was foolish. The thing that made the difference between the wise and the foolish was the fact that some had fuel to last them and some did not have the fuel to take them all the way through. And those who were faithful to keep faith to with their assignment, those who were committed were the ones who when the bridegroom came, those were the ones who had oil in their lamps and they were able to keep on going and they were able to go to the next level. If you don't make sure that your fire keep on burning, when the shout of the bridegroom comes, May it be that you are ready, even at this time, keep the fire burning because if you don't keep that fire burning, when the bridegroom announces his presence, you need to ensure that you have oil in your lamp to pursue and go after when he comes. I'm encouraging you today, Christians, wherever you are, believers, daughters, sons of God, wherever you are, you're listening to us today. I'm encouraging you, just like the priests were instructed to keep the fire burning, I am saying to you, keep the fire burning in your hearts. Keep that fire burning. Let not that fire be quenched or go out. Let nothing interfere with the fire of God in your spirit. Circumstances may come, challenges may come, difficulty, and all kinds of things may present itself to you in life. But I want you to know, while those things present themselves, the fire that is in you should not be allowed to stop burning. The fire should keep on burning all the time. In fact, 
I want to say to you even this day, you should probably be praying like the song says, a little more oil in my life. I want the fire not just to keep burning, but I want the fire to just uh, set a blaze. I want there to be a blaze of fire in my life. And I'm saying to you, this is the season for a blaze of God's fire to light in your heart. This is the time of moment when the fire of God's presence wants to burn. There's a song that we used to sing a long time that says, ah, I want the fire of his presence to burn in me so that the world can watch me burn for him. I want you to know that God is looking for a people in this day in whom the fire of his presence is burning. The world is in a very difficult place. People are crying out. They're broken. People are lost. People are burdened. People are looking for answers. And I can say to you, just like the priest was able to cause fire to stay alive in the temple so that those who look to the temple could have had a sense of hope. I am saying to you, the only place where there is hope this morning is in the life of those where the fire of God's presence is burning because coming out of their lives is a message saying that God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly and above all that we can ever ask or think. I am saying to you, as the fire burned within the hearts of those who are still staying connected to God, coming out of their lives, they are saying to you, God is able to keep in the midst of difficult times. He's able to keep in the midst of challenging moments. He's able to keep now. He will keep tomorrow and he will keep you in the years to come as long as he gives you breath in that body because of the fire burning within you. That fire will keep you and sustain you through every situation. May I say to you, the fire will also preserve you in the midst of a pandemic. The fire will preserve you and keep you. The fire will keep you alive. So I would like to encourage you today, keep the fire burning. Wherever you are, keep that fire burning in your hearts in the name of Jesus. So Father God, this morning I pray for every believer, every person who will have listened to our voice today. Those whose fires are going out. Those, oh God, my Father, who you can barely see a flick of the fire still burning in their hearts. Those, oh God, who are crying out. And because, Lord God, my Father, the world is looking for where the fire is. And I pray today in the name of Jesus that as your fire will burn and come alive in the hearts of those who are listening this morning, I pray, God, that we will do all the necessary things. Lord, we will worship. We will keep in fellowship. We will stay in your word. We will stay in your presence. We will do the necessary things that we should do. We will ensure that we allow ourselves to be immersed in the presence of the Holy Spirit on a daily basis. Baptize us afresh again with the power of your presence. Let the fire, oh God, my Father, that once burned within the hearts of so many, Lord God, even begin to burn again afresh this morning in the name of Jesus. So touch the broken, touch the struggling, touch, oh Lord God, even those who are struggling with sickness, infliction upon their bodies, things in their mind, oh God, that wants to cause them to become distracted. But I declare that the fire of your presence will be released this morning upon a people that is hungry, a people of God that's thirsty this morning. Let the fire burn within their hearts in the name of Jesus. Let an altar, oh God, my Father, be a place where brokenness is happening. Let an altar be a place, oh God, where submission and humility is happening so that as we walk humble before you, the fire fires will come alive in the name of Jesus. Lord, touch your sons and daughters today in Jesus' name. And I give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Ah, we give God praise and we bless you. I trust God that you keep the fire burning within your heart. Today also is a day in which we spend time reminding ourselves of the fact that Jesus Christ, he died, he was buried, and he rose again victorious. And just before Jesus went to the cross, the Bible tells us he sat in a very special place with his disciples. And while he was sitting in that particular place, the scripture tells us that he, he shared a supper with them. And the Bible tells us that when he was there, he took the bread and he broke the bread and he says to them, this bread is my body that is broken for you. This, as you eat it, you recall that my body is broken and shed for you. The Bible also tells us that he took the cup of wine and as they drank it together, the scripture tells us that when they drank from that cup together, he says to them, this blood represents a new covenant in my body. And I'm saying to you today, 
that as you drink from that cup and as you eat uh, from that bread today, you are going to say to God that I recall that you died, you were buried, but you rose again victorious so that I can live victorious. One of the things that this communion experience also reminds us is that Jesus said, I will not drink with you now, but I will drink with you again on that great a special day. There is a marriage supper of the Lamb. And every time we eat this bread and we drink this, this wine, we are reminding ourselves that one day we will eat with him and we will drink with him in a great marriage ceremony that is about to happen. Today I want to encourage you, wherever you are, take your bread, take your tokens, as we refer to it. Let the tokens that you hold today become that significant experience where you recognize just his body. Let's eat together in his name. We take this cup that represents Jesus' blood that was shed for us, and we drink in his name together. And so, Father, I declare upon your people today that our physical bodies will experience a manifestation of your grace. We do not take and approach this moment religiously, but God, let there be a manifestation of your power, touching bodies today, that sicknesses, diseases will go in the name of Jesus, and we will live and walk victorious. I declare sin, sickness, disease, infirmity, and poverty shall not have no rule or dominion over us today as we live victorious lives, as we stay connected to you, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. May the blessings of the Lord be with all those of you who have spent the time viewing with us today. May his grace abound towards you. We are from World Changes Assembly. For those of you who are not familiar with us, World Changes Assembly is situated in Newlands, um, Village Beach, Flanders Street. And we encourage you, when this is all over and you don't get the time, please feel free to visit with us. We'd be glad to have you. If you don't belong to a particular house, um, we'd be glad to have you come and share this moment with us. And your life can be enriched and be blessed by God. This Monday night, for those of us who are, for those of us who are belonging to Ambassador Church, um, Mafia will changes, visual changes. This Monday night, we meet for a time of prayer on Facebook rooms. We meet for a time of prayer at 7.30. We're expecting to see all those of you, everyone who's viewing, 7.30, we meet for a time of prayer. And this Tuesday, God's willing, uh, from Mafikin, we meet for a time of studying the word and for a time of prayer again. And on Wednesday night, God's willing, we meet again at this um, right here on Facebook. We meet again with a very interesting program we started last week. And our intention is to really um, climax that program. We started talking about the experience of persons of people who are broken. And we want to see if we can conclude that experience on this Wednesday from 7 a.m. 7 p.m. Sorry. So all of these programs on the Friday is a special time of encounter that we want you to be looking for. There's a youth voice that is speaking to you on Thursday, and so many different things. We highlight all of these things, and we ask that you will connect with it. And those of you who are connected to our assemblies, please share with your friends, link with them, and connect them to what we're doing, because we believe that there is a tremendous blessing in what we do and lives will be touched by God. God bless you and thank you so much for joining us today. And keep well, stay blessed, have the favor of God with you. In Jesus' name, amen.